joining us, public scholar players. Uh, of course, we play all this in our own capacity. The Institute for Policy Studies is for identification purposes only because we are a nonpartisan organization. I'd like to point you to our uh, IPS choir. We'll step right up here. No, no, come, come right up here, we're going to continue because you're going to be leading us. So the IPS choir is going to be leading us in the songs, and they will have passed out to you the songs. And uh, don't worry, because they'll, they'll lead us all and keep us in tune. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to the moderator and star of our play, the owner of Busboys and Poets, Andy Shalal. Just one clarification, there are no stars in this play, believe me, you will see. Um, if everybody can, can relax, this may take a few minutes and you may get tired uh, standing around, you may find it more appropriate for you to leave, and, but it may be, we want people to come in and kind of commit a little bit. So come on in and relax, sit down. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Live from Busboys and Poets in Washington, D.C., it's the 882nd Republican presidential debate hosted by the Institute for Policy Studies and Busboys and Poets. Good evening. I am Amira Woods with the Institute for Policy Studies. And I must say, we did have a star. We had a star. Herman King yeah. was to be our star, but we all by his sudden departure. And so, we'd like to start the debate with a heartfelt tribute. Yeah. Yeah. Poem, the cane ditty. Nine, 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 say it ain't so. Oh dear Herman, please don't go. Your chutzpah, your halo, your unrivaled hubris, your lack of embarrassment about being clueless. We didn't care that your tax plan was dumb. We didn't care that 999 made us numb. Your policy of nuclear war was quite grand, dictated by the mountainous terrain of Iran. We didn't care if you knew nothing of Libya, Gaddafi, Egypt, Mubarak. Or Namibia, <laughs> you loudly denounced women claiming sexual harassment. It was they and not you who were the embarrassment. We ended up when you swore you had never done wrong, that it was your charisma to wish women wrong. Then we watched the endless Republican debates. We knew the others next to you were lightweights. So what will we do? Now that you've stepped down, who will be the next bumbling clown? <laughs> I guess the job now falls to nudes. <laughs> but we really will miss you because you were a hoot. So, 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 speaking, of, so speaking of nude and bumbling clowns, let's turn now to our candidates. Fortunately, we are still left with an impressive array of shockingly, <clears throat> shocking candidates. We ask the audience to join us in, a wel in welcoming them with a resounding rendition of Deck the Hall. You can follow us along with the lyrics in your playbook and on the screen. Deck the halls with fools and follies, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to fight commies, fa la 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 la. Carry on his gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Wants gay people to be sterile, fa la 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 la. See the blazing fools before us, fa la 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 la. Shocking that their brains are the forest, fa la 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 la. Romney Perry, Paul and Gingrich, fa la 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 la. They are the born for not being rich, fa la 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 la. First, and introduce yourself to us, please. Hi, I 
am Michelle Bachman. I used to be a tax attorney, which is filled with irony and chutzpah, because I hate taxes. But my husband, whom the Bible says to whom I must be submissive, told me to do it. It's also in the Constitution. I also proposed the Light Bulb Freedom of Choice Act in Congress because the Constitution and the Bible says that we must have the freedom to choose our own light bulbs. Woo! <laughs> well, well, yes, it seems you chose not to be the brightest bulb in the pack. <laughs> Mr. Paul? I'm Ron Paul. <laughs> I'm the zero, zero, zero candidate. <laughs> zero wars, yeah. zero taxes, and zero chance of becoming president. <laughs> All these other candidates, they just pretend to be zeros. But I'm the real thing. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Ray Perry, and I'm from Texas. And I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm an evangelical Christian. That's because of my deep-rooted beliefs that I share with the American people. In the Father, the Son, and... Let's get back to me, please. Don't you want me? I bet you $10,000 you all know who I am. <laughs> I'm the former liberal governor from Massachusetts who used to support higher taxes, universal health care, and the right to choose. And now that I'm running as a candidate for president, I support no taxes, no health care, and no right to choose. <laughs> speaker Gingrich. I am the historic speaker of the House, Duke Gingrich. Yeah! I'm a doctorate in history. I'm father of the American work ethic. And I champion the 80 hour work week for the young and the poor. And yes, I do have a big head, but that's necessary for the big ideas. Even small children understand that. And if you don't, then you're hopelessly stupid. Thank you for that uh, impressive set of introductions. The first question is for you, Mr. Zero Chance. Uh, if you don't think anyone should pay taxes, what will happen to our public schools? The Founding Fathers never went to public school. <laughs> our children only need to know about the Constitution. Everything else is nobody's business. And I assume you think everything else is a conspiracy, even the Federal Reserve, huh? Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> The next question, uh, Mr. Barry, if you were to become president, what are the first three things that you would do in office? Now oh, that's a that's a that's a gotcha question. That's <laughs> no, I can't answer that. But, but, but why not? It seems as perfectly appropriate as a question. Well, I mean, there's many reasons. First of all, I can't be asked to think of three things at once. <laughs> Second of all. And in Texas, we learn this. The first thing you gotta say is secure the border. Yeah. Every time, secure the border, secure the border. We want extra moats and extra alligators. <laughs> and the third thing, now, oops. <laughs> Michelle Bachman, you seem to wave the Constitution around a lot. And you talk about the founding of this nation. Yet, you didn't realize that the Revolutionary War started in Concord, Massachusetts, rather than Concord, New Hampshire. And you claim that our forefathers fought tirelessly to end slavery. Why on earth should anyone take you seriously? <laughs> well, because our founding fathers hated the idea of taxation without representation. So just imagine what they would think of representation with taxation.
You know, I agree with that. I haven't, I haven't thought of that before. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, moving right along, Mr. Romney. Well, it's, it's about time because, you know, this is a rather unusual debate, and me as the front runner to not get the first question is really kind of an insult. Uh, <laughs> Willard, uh, may I call you Willard? Of course, I'm a man of the people. But you have said, you have said that corporations are people. Exactly. Um, well, isn't a corporation just a profit-making entity without a moral conscience? Well, well, that's what I am too. Uh, I'm a person, right? I mean, I'll bet anyone in the audience ten thousand dollars that I'm a person. Um, I mean, I'll challenge anybody who says I'm not a person. You, are you up for it? That remark was so stupid that the only way I could possibly illuminate its breathtaking stupidity is to build a global array of mirrored satellites that would focus the sun's rays to power an electronic, the electromagnetic pulse weapon that would fry the unobtainium that powers that flip-flopping electronic chip in your brain. What you need to understand is that, historically speaking, you are an idiot. This debate is idiotic. The moderators are idiots. And my fellow candidates are idiots. Barack Obama is an idiot. And the office of the president should be called the office of the idiot. So really, you just called yourself an idiot there. But I'm just going to let that be. But, you know, we could bet your, your Tiffany's tab if we really wanted to up the, up the stakes. Um, now, gentlemen. Wait, wait. I'm not stupid. I, I'm, I'm tied in the polls with Mitt. I, yeah. Why don't you ask me a question? <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Paul. Some people say that you're not even a Republican. Why don't you just join the Democratic Party? The Democratic Party is sick, sick, sick. It needs a doctor. But I'm not the man for that job. Poor kids never see anyone work or make money unless it's legal. Yet studies prove that most poor kids live in homes with working adults. Do you want to retract your statement based on contrary evidence? What you need to understand is that study and statistics are stupid. And you are stupid for citing them. Kids <laughs> are lazy, their parents are crackhead criminals, and they need to clean up our trash to learn the American work ethic. And if they're lucky, they can grow up to be congressmen, cheat on their wives, clothing, uh, count at Tiffany's, and command $60,000 per speech. That, you simpletons, is how you build a pathway to prosperity. So all you real conservatives who really wonder why he's the front runner, look at me. Audience, that's our cue. Look at the lyrics and follow along. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. We're telling you why. New is coming back into town. He's making a list. He's checking it twice. Gonna make all the more stars at a price. New is coming back into town.
You can't invent an idea. You can't invent an idea. Our time is here. Our time is here. We are the ninety-nine percent. We are the ninety-nine percent. Our time is here. Our time is here. We are the ninety-nine percent. We are the ninety-nine percent. We are the ninety-nine percent. We make up the ninety-nine percent. Get a job. We are the ninety-nine percent. We are. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. We have an announcement. We have an announcement. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You know Romney and Bachman and Ron Paul and Perry, Santorum and Herman and Gingrich and Huntsman. But do you recall the greatest we have at all? Thank you all for tuning in.